to another episode of uh, Aquarium Live today. My name is Jen and joining me in the studio is Kaya who's going to be uh, helping us connect with a very special guest or two very special guests. And we also have Cynthia answering and bringing in any questions that you might have. So if you're interested in participating along with us because our topic is all about food, one of my personal favorites and otters, another one of my personal favorites. You can go on ahead and send the questions right down, uh, right down and go on ahead and write uh, any kind of questions that you might have to 562-286-1838. Uh, so the texting number is right down here. So feel free to reach out. Uh, and it looks like we already have a question, which is awesome. What type of a sea otter was that? Ah, well my friend, our sea otter, I'll bring Bring her back on up. There's a southern sea otter that we have right here. Uh, so she lives more along the coast of Southern California and likes it a little bit more in the southern region. There's other otters that live a little bit, woo, a little bit more northern. Uh, those are northern sea otters. So they will live up near Alaska, the Aleutian Islands, and all the way across uh, to Russia, and then also even into Japan too. But our friend right now is a more of a local variety. All right. So, but this sea otter is actually not my special guest. I have other special guests today, like Captain Joe from the Ocean Rangers. And our other Hello, sea boys otter. and girls. Welcome to the Aquarium of the Pacific. I'm Captain Joe of the Ocean Ranger, and I'm here with my co host, Sea Otter, today in the Northern Pacific Gallery at the Aquarium. And we're here to investigate about food today, Sea Otter. Now, I do know that food is one of your favorite things. Sea otters have a huge appetite. But unfortunately today, sea otter, we're not here to eat food. We're here to investigate food. I know. We're going to learn today about how our food is prepared for our animals and also how our food is fed out to our animals as well. So sea otter, let's team up. You go that way, find more about the preparation of the food, and I'll go this way and I'll find out more about how that food is given out to the animals. Ready? Let's do it. of their high five, but that's okay. I have my sea otter friend here. Yeah. All right, friends. So we are going to get a chance to learn a little bit more about how food is prepped here and then also how it is fed. So let's go on ahead and check in with our sea otter friend because they have met up with our, with one of our aquarists. So these are, and mammalogists. These are folks that take care of our animals here at the aquarium and prepare their food. So let's check in in the prep room. All right, that's a great question. First of all, my name is Ron Mortensen and I'm the assistant curator here for the bird and mammal group. Behind us, we have the food prep room. This is where all the food for all the animals, including you, comes from. All right, sea otter, well, as you can tell, this is a busy time in the morning. This is food preparation time. Behind you, we have food preparation going on for the fishes. Over here, we have food preparation going on for the sea otters. Anyone interested in that? Yeah. Food preparation going on for the birds. And finally, over here, we have food preparation going on for the seals and the sea lions. So we got a lot of food preparation going on in this room at this time of day, every day. Wow, so that's really cool to be able to see that each part of our prep room has their, has their own area in which they are able to prep the food. 
You know, I'm a little curious, though, to know how exactly do they keep that food organized? All right, sea otter, so here we've got food prep going on for all your little otter buddies. We have to divide it up so we know who gets which because each otter gets a little bit different food. You see these are smaller bins. We got larger bins over here. We mix all their food together and then we take it out and we put it into these nice stainless steel bins which we wear on our pouch right here on our hips. So when we go in to feed, we have our hands free. That works out really well. You can see we have shrimp, we have clams, and we have squid. As a matter of fact, I think I still have some squid I need to cut up. You want to help me? All right, and we just weigh everything out based on what each otter needs, and each one's a little different. So we'll just cut up this squid here. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. This isn't yours. We'll just get this all cut up here. And they can eat whole squid, but the reason we cut it up is because it makes it easier for training. It gives us bite-sized pieces, kind of like popcorn to a sea otter, so that works out really well. Of course, seals and sea lions swallow their food whole, so we can feed them pretty big fish without having to worry about it sea otters chew their food and we're done we will just put this in the bin mm, well i'm getting a little hungry looking at all of those tasty food treats are you <laughs> i'm guessing that's a yes <laughs> now we did get a question uh that came in that text in saying what are captain joe's credentials you know what that is a great question now, you know, in this world that we're currently living in, it's really hard to be able to always see all of our coworkers. And so usually Joe and I, we will talk through this program. And so it's really, it's really tricky uh, to be able to get to know someone. But as we've gone ahead and get to know each other, I do know that Captain Joe has done a lot of extensive ocean ranger training. And it's a specialty kind of training um, that takes in consideration information here at the aquarium then also does some field training as well. So it's a very comprehensive program. Uh, you know, many times they also solve marine mammal mysteries if there happens to be, you know, any kind of um, oddball animal that might be around. And they also look into some fish mysteries as well. So very much a little bit on the, on the sleuthing side, but Joe has lots of different kinds of credentials. So hopefully they answered your question for you. Now we are going to one of my personal favorite things, puzzle time. So all of our puzzles here are a little bit different and uh, for this puzzle, if I'm not mistaken, it has all the little windows, right Kaya, that open up. And so basically we start with a complete picture that is covered up by a whole bunch of squares and eventually those squares start to peel off one by one by one. And as they peel off, your, your job basically, or if you'd like to participate, is to really kind of figure out what do you think that image might be. And if you happen to know what that image is, feel free to go on ahead and text that, uh, text your answer right on in. And we'd be happy to, to shout out your answer and to see if you are correct. So I don't know about you, but I've been looking at puzzle time all day. So let's go on ahead, Kaya, and show us our puzzle. think? Hmm, let's see. Kaya's thinking maybe something with pinchies on it. She's making this motion behind. Well, let's see. You know, it kind of looks like it might have some pinchy parts right here and right here, kind of that red and black color. I'm gonna step out of the screen for a moment and give you a chance to see this entire portion of this half puzzle that we have right here. Anything kind of any? Are, do you see any particular body parts? Hmm. Well, I see an eye. I think it's an eye. Maybe it's a button or a bubble. Maybe right here. Let's see. Uh, I think that there also might be some red on here, and it looks like whatever this is, it's definitely bright red. I see other colors around it. Do you see other colors? Hmm. Kaya sees other colors. Yeah, she sees the orange. Absolutely, looks like there might be some orange right up here. I even see some yellow right down here. Hmm. Any thoughts to what it might be? Kaya's thinking crab. Let's find out. Should 
have actually gone. Right? That's a lot more appropriate for our crab friend right here. And you know what? I was right. It wasn't a bubble. It was actually one of its eyes. My goodness, it's so small. Right? And it definitely has two of them. One here and one there. It has a nice big mouth right here. And those big pincher claws that Kaya was noticing earlier, right? And so it really helps for this crab animal to be able to shred their food before they eat it. I like some of my food shredded too. Like pulled pork sandwiches that's all shredded up or maybe some shredded chicken mm, for a chicken sandwich. You know, there's so many different, different ways that you can prepare food, right, for us. And certain animals prepare, like their food prepared a certain way too. So these claws and that kind of mouth help give our crab the best kind of food given to it in the best kind of way that it likes, shredded. All right, so let's go on ahead and, uh, and now go on ahead and maybe check in with Joe to see what he's up to. Welcome back, boys and girls. We're here investigating how we feed our fish at the aquarium. Oh, but Joe, why are you in a wetsuit? Well, while I was investigating, I found out that we have scuba divers that help us feed all of our animals. And to make sure that all of the animals are getting fed in our large exhibits, like this big one behind me, they actually get inside of the water and help feed all of the animals. Ah, oh, that's really cool. Uh, so that's awesome that Joe's telling us a little bit about how they feed our animals, right? Because sea otter showed us more of the preparation side. So let's see if Joe can tell us a little bit more about the feeding of these animals, uh, maybe wearing that scuba suit. Here are some of the tools that our scuba divers use while feeding our animals. This right here is a feeding bucket. We'll use these on our larger animals here at the aquarium, like our rays or our Queensland grouper and the divers will get right inside the water and feed them right from this bucket. It is very, very cool to see. Now our smaller animals, believe it or not, some of them love vegetables, broccoli, lettuce, and the others, they like very small worms that we can actually squirt inside the cracks in our coral and they love trying to get at them. Now this is very cool. These are grabbers, and our divers will use these at the surface to feed animals like sharks and our sea turtle. Now, boys and girls, we've learned a lot from the observations we've made here in our tropical gallery. I think what we should do is go meet back up with sea otter. All right, sounds like a plan. All right, friends, so we've had a chance to be able to now get a feel for what it's like to be able to, well, feed our animals here at the aquarium. and. So let's go on ahead and check back in with Sea Otter, see if there's any extra information that, that we might want to know about. Hey, Sea Otter! Ooh, looks like Sea Otter's looking at some fish in the bucket. Sea Otter? Sea Otter? Where'd you see? Oh, no, 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 Sea Otter. That's, that's not your food. That's not your food. Your food's in the refrigerator. Let's put this with your food and we'll go get yours. Your feeding time's coming. Come on. All right, Sea Otter. You ready to see where we keep your food? We keep it in the refrigerator. Let's go on in here. Here we are. This is the refrigerator. I know it's cold. You should be good with that fur. I don't have fur on. I had to wear my sweatshirt. Here's your food right here. You can see your little bin is already gone. It's on its way up to the exhibit. So we got to get up there so that you can go get your food for the morning. All right. So it looks like Sea Otter is going to get a chance to munch on some much deserved breakfast or maybe lunch at this time or maybe snack, perhaps afternoon tea. Wonder. Would, would otters have tea with their squid? Hmm. Kind of thinks maybe, yeah. They, they just might, depending upon where they, where they live. Uh, but you know what? Feeding's all great. I know that one of my favorite things is to cook and make a delicious meal. But unfortunately, there's also that cleanup part. So let's check back in uh, and learn a little bit more about how we clean up here at the aquarium. Now that we've prepared all the food for the day, now we have to do the most important step. We have to clean the kitchen. Just like any restaurant or hospital, we use stainless steel so it's really easy to clean. We even use stainless steel scrub pads and lots and lots of soap. Hot water and a little elbow grease and the kitchen will be all sparkly and new. Definitely have to scrub all the countertops and get them all nice and clean for the next meal. All right, friends, I don't know about you, but it is time for another puzzle, which I am very excited about. So let's go on ahead and see what this puzzle is all about. 
Now remember, if you happen to know that answer, feel free to go on ahead and text your answer on in. We'd love to hear from you. All right, Kaya, take it away. Ooh, so, so far there's a clue. Blue. Hmm. Yeah, one of my favorite colors. Let's see. Hmm. Well, it's kind of blurry back behind. So my guess is that we're focusing on whatever it is that we happen to have here. Now, definitely notice that looks like a fin, doesn't it? So we have a fin that seems to be bright yellow, but also kind of black right here. And I see some more black on its body, but clearly its main color is blue, right? Because, I mean, our puzzle was blue after all. So we have blue, we have yellow, we have black, and a fin. Well, to me that's kind of thinking fish. Hmm. So maybe if I step off the screen for a little bit, we can kind of look at the background to maybe help us figure out, well, do we have a guess to what kind of fish it might be? Like, do we think it's one that lives in tropical waters? Do we think it might be one that lives in cold waters? Hmm. Well, looking in the back, it looks like, almost looks like there's another fish, right? Right back here. But it's weird because it looks black and white. But it almost reminds me of a clownfish, right? It's not orange and white, but it definitely looks black and white right here. Huh. What else do you see? Well, I see color pink. Right? We have some pink down here, and around here, and up around. Hmm. Anything else really stand out to you? Well, let's go on ahead and find out to see what it is. I'm thinking fish, though. Fish of some kind. anemone fish, the clownfish that we were thinking about? Look, there they are right there. So we have a, what we like to call a palette tang right here. And so it's named because, see this little spot right here? It looks like a painter's palette where you'd, it's like a plate where you could put all the different colors and dab your paintbrush in to paint a picture. And right there, that little spot is where you would put your thumb. So that way the thumb kind of holds the, the little palette onto your hand with all those paints. So that's how this animal got its name. All right. Oh, wasn't that a great puzzle time? I think so too. Kaya was a huge fan. She just, her eyes light up whenever it's puzzle time and she just, she just gets really excited. So hopefully you were all excited too. So share in a little bit of that puzzle time. Now, here at the aquarium, we not only love to do puzzles, because they are very, very fun, and we do enjoy a good snack here, at least within the office from time to time, but you know what? There's more to animal health care than just making sure that they get good food and that we're able to clean up the kitchen where that food is made. And some of that includes other health care. So we are going to check in with our friend Sarah Shields uh, here at the Molina Animal Care Center, and she's going to tell us a little bit more about how we take care of our animals here. Welcome, Ocean Rangers. My name is Shara Seals. I am a veterinary technician here at the Molina Animal Care Center. This is our vet hospital for all of our animals here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. I work with Dr. Lance Adams, our veterinarian. Do you guys ever go to the dentist? Yeah, me too. Well, some of our animals here at the aquarium need to go to the dentist as well. So today we're gonna clean some teeth on a sea otter. In the wild, sea otters use shells like clams and urchins to naturally brush their teeth. But here in the aquarium, we help them out a little bit. We don't feed them shells. We take them to the dentist. Once a day, they get their teeth brushed with a toothbrush, just like us. And then, once a year, when the otters come for their dentist appointment, they have the same thing done as you and I would when we go. Let's go over some of the tools that we use to clean their teeth. Here we have a fake 
plastic otter skull. This shows you what their teeth look like. This is a polisher. This polisher is used to polish their teeth. So we have to use toothpaste as well. And this is bubblegum flavored. Use this toothpaste with the polisher to polish their teeth. And we make sure we get all the crevices. We also use this scaler. This gets in between the teeth where the polisher doesn't reach. And then we also have hand tools that we can use. These kind of act as dental floss. They can get in the really small crevices. So we can pick all of the plaque out and keep their teeth clean. All right. Now that you guys have seen some of the tools that we use to clean their teeth, let's do it for real. Today we're gonna clean one of our sea otters, Betty. Gotta put my protective gear on. One thing though, they have to be asleep when we do this. So it's better for them and it's easier for us. So let's go check it out. Shara for all of that great info on how we take care of the teeth of our sea otters here at the aquarium. Um, now, I have a question for all of you. In fact, it is the question of the day. So, let's see. A question might be... Oh, well, we actually have a question from, from some folks and they are asking, have you been to the dentist with a sea otter? Well, unfortunately, the sea otter and I do not share the same dentist. Uh, they go to the one here. I, unfortunately, am not allowed to go to the one here. Otherwise, I totally would. I think that would be kind of fun. I'd be in one chair, and then the sea otter would be in a different chair, and could maybe, you know, watch the same movie, even though the sea otter is asleep, and I'm not, but I think it would be a good time. Uh, but we do actually view the procedures here at the aquarium, which is really cool. So at our Molina Animal Care Center, all, all of our windows are, are open and are available to view. So public can check out when sea otter uh, dentist cleanings are actually happening. So here you can see some of those windows that you can kind of check into. And many times we'll have educators out there answering any kinds of questions that you might have. Now we actually have seating that's available too. So you can kind of sit and enjoy, uh, as long as you're socially distant, of course, to be able to check out some of these really neat procedures. Uh, many times too, we'll also advertise them on our social media. So not that we always know exactly when they're gonna be happening, but we sometimes take pictures and post them on our social media of the, of the actual sea otter teeth being cleaned um, at that particular time, which is kind of fun too to see. All right, so, and I have seen that before too, which has been really kind of kind of neat to be able to see them off the exhibit and in here at the center getting their teeth cleaned. It's pretty neat. All right, so thank you for asking. All right, so our question of the day, which is name a food we feed to our sea otters. Now you may have had a chance to see some of that uh, clues when sea otter was, was helping our husbandry folks, our folks that take care of the animals, uh, some food. So do you remember what some of those food pieces might be? Well, let's go on ahead and give you some clues. I think it is. Is that shrimp? Yep. Sometimes they go on ahead and get shrimp. Other times squid. If you remember, Rob was talking about how the squid are cut up into popcorn pieces, right? And then we also, they can get some clam. Sometimes it's large clam tongues that gets chopped up into parts. Other times they will get a whole little clam and they can bash it up to try to get it open so that way they can eat all the tasty parts inside. So from that first uh, picture that you saw, right over here, you saw maybe um, an otter just trying to bash something up against the wall. And that is a clam in its shell. Ooh, seafood cupcakes. Very nice. So yeah, they definitely get some seafood cupcakes too. Yeah, so we have lots of different kinds of enrichment. Uh, so ways that we can kind of play with their food 
and give them their food in different ways. So sometimes they might get cupcakes, other not seafood cupcakes, of course, like mentioned. Uh, other times they might get clam popsicles or smoothies. So much like how we have lots of different ways that we can eat things, same things for these animals as well. All right. Um, now, you know, we don't have a sea otter cam here at the aquarium, unfortunately. So we can't always get a chance to see their behavior, but we do have a wide variety of cameras that you can check out how, and watch how different animals eat. Sometimes for our penguin cameras, we have our aviculturists, those that take care of the birds. You'll see them out on our penguin beach and they'll have a bucket and they'll go on ahead and feed out individual fish and take note of which penguin ate that. So you can do that from time to time. Other times you'll see our divers in the water, much like how um, Joe was talking about earlier. And that really, um, you can watch the divers go in the water and feed too. So that's pretty fun to be able to see that. You can see all sorts of different animals uh, eating. So that was a quick glimpse of our penguin cam that we have there. Misters must be on because to keep them nice and cool, though they are actually beach penguins. So they definitely fit in pretty well here at Long Beach uh, for their weather, weather as they're usually found on the coast of, of Argentina and Chile right there. So pretty cool to be able to have those animals and that's definitely one of the cams that you could see. Now we also have Blue Cavern right here, which is another one. Uh, when Kaya was doing her scuba diving program, actually, there was a diver that came in here and had one of those squeeze bottles, much like how Joe was talking about, and was squeezing food out of it. And we had a whole school of fish right here in Blue Cavern, and they were just nom nom nomming away at all of that tasty food. So if you're lucky, or um, if you don't want to wait, you can scroll through our webcam, because as you can kind of see here, I'm going to step out of the way, just like how Kai is doing, right? You too can scroll through the bottom and you might be able to catch one of those times in which our divers are feeding. So and you can kind of fast forward. Uh, other times we have highlights and those are really fun too, which you'll usually find on the opposite end right here. So, oh, there we go. I think we have a diver right on up here and we'll see them kind of descend. And I'm gonna move out of the way real quick. So you can see that they have their full on scuba tank and everything. And much like how the mammologists had their little buckets full of uh, shrimp, squid, and fish to be able to feed out in popcorn pieces to our sea otters, our divers, like Captain Joe mentioned, have the squeeze bottles and those other little buckets that they have to feed out to all the different fish that live inside. Now, this is our blue cavern habitat, and so this is really kind of highlighting a lot of the small fish that we happen to have. Uh, and some of our medium fish, in which you can see some of that food being dropped down. It almost looks like little bits of rain here and there. But eventually you'll start seeing some of these large, or some of these smaller fish kind of coming on down. And what's really great is because this is in real time, uh, but you can also scroll back and forth. Kaya right here was able to just kind of scroll around to be able to catch that feeding. But looks like she may have gone too far. But that's okay, right? That happens from time to time. But it's a really cool way to be able to check out how different animals eat. So uh, we have, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a feeding of our jellies on jelly cam. Have you, Kaya? Not so much. Um, but definitely for our blue cavern exhibit that we have right here, our penguin beach is another good one. And then also our large big trop exhibit too. There's some really cool feeding. And that was some of what was highlighted when Captain Joe was showing our large fish that was eating, and then also another one of our rays that was getting fish right up against that glass. All right, friends. Um, unfortunately, our time is just about ending here, but it's really cool to be able to chat a little bit about food and how we take care of our sea otters here at the aquarium. Let's go on ahead and see if we can say goodbye to Joe. <laughs> so it was great being able to say goodbye to Joe as well as Sea Otter and we're going to have to say goodbye to you today. If you do have any questions though, you're always more than welcome to email us at live at lbaop.org and we'd be happy to answer any additional questions that you might have. It's the end of our programming for today, but don't you fret, there are tons more programs tomorrow um, at our usual times of... 9, 10, 11, 1, and 2. I remembered. So all of those programs are available. And also, we have all of our old archived programs that are also available to watch on YouTube. And of course, if you have any questions throughout any of those programs, 
Once again, we're still always available, uh, not on our text line, but definitely on our email live at lbaop.org. Thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.